European ancestry. Their knowledge of weapons like this comes directly from native groups, including the Tewelche. Right, here we go, Bush. Perhaps that knowledge includes stories of giants. And I'm coming after you! Ah, ha! Ha -ha! Adolfo says he's heard the tales. They used to tell a story about uh, hairy, uh, hairy creatures, uh, beasts that they, they were af very afraid of. Big animals. Yeah, sort. scary big animals. Yeah. How big? Uh, it, it was about uh, three meters, three meters tall. Oh, very big. Yeah, very big. So terrifying were these giants that early natives incorporated them into their folk tales and legends. The stories tell of a gigantic, hairy creature that roamed the forest, letting out a blood-curdling scream. On top of that, these giants were said to have a tail. They said that they couldn't get their arrows to, to penetrate the, their, their, their skins. And even some, some explorers in, in Patagonia yeah. said that the, the bullets uh, didn't make any effect on, on the animal. And stories are still being told in the gaucho community? Oh, yeah, yeah. They are passed uh, over from generation to, to generation, yes. Yeah. They, it's, the legend is, is, is alive. Could these legends be true? Could a Bigfoot with a tail actually exist here? To determine the truth behind these stories, I travel to the coastal town of Bahia Blanca to meet a renowned paleontologist. Okay. She's one of the world's foremost experts on ancient animals. Her name is Silvia Aramayo. She spent more than a decade studying and analyzing the remains of giant creatures. She tells me she has something very interesting to show me. Oh, busy, you got lots of people here. Should we go in? Yes. We, we may go. This wow. is incredible. A series of giant footprints, so big that they seem unreal. These footprints were buried under sand until a big storm exposed them in 1968. Silvia's colleagues, Teresa Manera and Roque Bianco, were the first to see them and realized they might be ancient fossils. Today, Sylvia and her crew are making molds of the footprints to preserve a record of their size and shape. Can I put my foot in there? Yes, if you can, but be, I'll be careful. careful. Very careful. That's huge. Huge. <laughs> and then he went over here. And the other on the left, yes. Ugh. Wow, that's huge. It's hmm? amazing. This is so exciting. Because as I said, we, I'm on the trail of giants, and this is the first evidence I've seen of giant footprints actually on the landscape. The land of big feet. That's what I've learned Patagonia means. Perhaps Patagonia got its name because the explorers stumbled on footprints like these. When was this footprint pushed in? When? When? 12,000 years ago. And so what, back then, if we were here 12,000 years ago, this was mud. It was mud, exactly, yes. Okay. And, exactly. This, and this creature came in and this yes, giant came right. in and squished its footprints in here. Yes. Paleontologists this know this like because of the animal's gait and the depth of the tracks. So the shape way. of these prints told them what kind of creature created them. Megatherium footprint. Megatherium. megatherium. What is a megatherium? Like an elephant? It's an, no, it's an, a ground sloth. This is a sloth? This is sloth, yes. Sloths today make footprints that are very similar. That's why scientists believe that these belong to a sloth species. As more and more megatherium fossils have been discovered, a clearer portrait of the creature has begun to emerge. Sloths are like this big. What did this thing look like? This, like this? You this? See? This yes. is what made this? That's the, a giant sloth. The, a giant sloth, the ground sloth. And the animal upright is was six meters high and 5,000 kilograms in weight. That's about 20 feet tall and 11,000 pounds. Oh my God. That is huge. Yes. And it's covered in fur. Yeah, that's right. And this sloth can walk on two legs? Walk it upright, yes, that's right. We, A giant they, creature I, walking but is that on normal? two that feet. That that's what the gauchos told me. The Bigfoot that made these tracks is no myth. My search for the giants of Patagonia has taken a strange turn. Yeah! I'm no longer looking for giant humans. 
I'm on a hunt for the Bigfoot mentioned in native legends. I've seen one creature's huge fossilized footprints, and now, to get a real sense of the size of this animal, I'm heading to La Plata Museum near Buenos Aires, where I've heard a complete skeleton of a megatherium is on display. I'm curious to learn more about these giants, so I'm here to meet Chief Paleontologist Susana Barco. Susanna. Oh, Josh. Hi, yeah, Josh. Hi. Nice to meet, to meet you. you. Yeah, pleasure. How are you? Wow, this place is great. Yeah. The picturesque La Plata Museum has one of the world's oldest and most important collections of paleontological and natural history specimens. Oh, These are real bones? Are real bones, all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this an, is an elephant. Are there mm -hmm. any giants in this room? Well, beside the elephants, yeah. the real giants are at the paleontology exhibition. Okay. Uh -huh. Megatherium. This is the giant. And this is what made the footprints I saw? Yes, of course. Look at that. Megatherium Americanum. Megatherium Americanum. Mm -hmm. Weighing as much as an elephant and standing yeah, around 20 12, feet high, the Megatherium was a very impressive animal. This is just one of the many skeletons that scientists have found throughout South America. And I see that you've got it standing on two feet as it was walking. Yeah. Is that how it normally moved? Yeah, that's right. Is there any way to know when this thing lived? Well, they live uh, between 2 million years ago mm -hmm. and 10,000. Up to 10,000 years, years ago. Up to 10,000 years ago. But no one knows if modern humans saw or had any contact with the megatherium. Experts believe it's unlikely that the native stories of giants were based on these creatures. But Susanna says the early natives did have contact with a cousin of this animal, the Mylodon. And the Mylodon, it seems, could certainly have been the native's legendary Bigfoot. Hairy creatures that thundered through the forest at night, letting out blood-curdling screams. And the skin of a Mylodon is right here in this museum. Actually, that is pretty heavy. It's very heavy, I told you. This piece of skin was found over a century ago, in 1895. It created quite a sensation because no one had seen anything like it before. That must have been exciting to discover it. What did they think when they found this skin? Well, they think that they belong to a species that is still alive. And that's because the pelt seemed so fresh. They felt certain that animals like this still roam the land. But we now know that this pelt belongs to the Mylodon and is about eight to 10,000 years old. This unusual skin seems consistent with the native tales about the Mylodon's thick hide. What are these things? Those things are small pieces of bone. They're part they of are, the skin? Yeah, they're part of the skin. That's pretty hard. Yeah. So they have like armor-plated skin. It's an armor plate. Wow. Yeah. This is interesting because I've heard from the gauchos how hard their skin was. Yeah. The gauchos told me stories about mysterious encounters between the natives and these giants. They spoke of firing their arrows at these enormous wild beasts. But instead of harming the animals, their arrows would bounce off and fall to the ground. Looking at this bony skin, those tales seem more believable. Susanna tells me that Mylodons were well over seven feet tall. That's pretty tall. Could these be the true source of the native stories of Patagonian giants? I wonder if it's possible that the Mylodons could have continued to exist from the time of the early natives into recent history. Well, scientists, we don't have the proof for that. But there are people that still believe that these animals are still alive. Mylodons certainly meet the criteria I'm looking for. They could stand on two feet, they were covered in fur, and over seven feet tall, they were definitely giants. And there are people called cryptozoologists who believe that there's a possibility that the Mylodon could still be alive today. I'm returning to Chilean Patagonia, to the town of Puerto Natales, to meet Charlie Jacoby, a reporter, seasoned explorer, and cryptozoologist. He lives and works in London, but he may know more about the South American giant sloth than almost anyone else. 
He's brought me to a cave outside town where an exciting discovery was made in 1895. Should we go in? Yep. Find some myelodons? Let's go find some myelodons. Josh, I'd like to introduce you to the Mylodon. Oh, yes. Close personal friend of mine. Yeah. Mylodon, Josh. Josh, Mylodon. Pleasure. This life-size replica of a Mylodon is about nine feet tall. So it looks more like, you know, sort of polar bear meets anteater. You know? Well, yeah, I'd say a kind of nine-foot hamster, really. So not necessarily hunting people down. No, definitely not. God, it just looks so, you know, ready to kill you. So this... This sculpture basically represents what was discovered in this cave. Yes, that's right. There was a guy, a sea captain called Herman Eberhardt, who bought all this land here in the 1890s. He rode up here one day and, and he found this skin in the back of the cave. That's the skin that I saw in the museum. Is yeah, exactly. Furry, stony looking. With the little bony bits in it, that's yeah. right. Said the skin this looked so fresh that everyone concluded that the animal had died recently. And this electrified Edwardian Britain. I mean, sloth fever gripped the country. The newspapers were fascinated. So this is where people were coming, looking for these, these nine-foot sloths. Sloths. Sloth. 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 Josh. T tomato. Tomato. <laughs> OK, fine. Instead of calling the whole thing off, we get on with the story about sloth fever. And the Daily Express had this, this bright young writer who was very good at cricket, but they thought would also be very good at exploring, called Hesketh Pritchard, my great-grandfather, and sent him out here. Hesketh Pritchard, Charlie's great-grandfather, came to this region in 1902, hoping that somewhere in the vast expanse of Patagonia, Mylodons might still roam. He traveled farther than anyone else into the wilds of Patagonia looking for them. And Charlie is determined to continue that quest. So this is despite the fact that scientists are saying this animal went extinct long ago. Well, scientists are constantly revising what they, what they say based on, on new evidence. Charlie well, takes me to the mean, back of the cave I mean. and explains that scientists okay. originally thought myelodons became extinct before humans came around. Sure. This was where they first discovered that Mylodons and man lived together in the same place. Not in the same cave? Yeah, in the same cave. Absolutely. Really? You How see, does that work? See that wall there? That was built right up to the top, and behind that, they reckoned that people kept Mylodons. Were they kept as pets? Were they kept for food? Scientists can't say for sure. But one thing they're fairly certain about is that Mylodons no longer roam the region. Charlie, however, is not entirely convinced. So you think scientists may be wrong here? Well, science is always revising. I mean, history is always revising. That's, that's, that's what's so magical about it. And so some discovery would create a new timeline of when these animals went extinct. It's always possible. It's possible. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's the spirit of adventure. You know, it's the, it's the looking. If you're just going to sit in some crusty museum going, no, there aren't any, that's no good at all. Right. You've got to get out there and have a look. Well, what kind of evidence do you have to support this idea that one survived? Well, the same evidence that, that sent great-grandfather here in the first place. It's, it's stories. It's stories about natives who fired arrows at this, this stone pig, as they described it, and the arrow would just bounce off. Charlie says if we can prove that arrows do bounce off a myelodon skin, it could help prove that the native stories were not hoaxes. In fact, he thinks that myelodons may still exist today. No, we could, we could actually go and try that if you like. Yeah, we all for that. Let's go and do that. In my pursuit of giants, I've seen huge fossilized footprints, examined the pelt of an ancient sloth called the Mylodon, and explored a cave where they once dwelled. Could the native stories of Bigfoot be based on fact? To find out, I'm about to try an experiment with giant sloth enthusiast Charlie Jacoby. To do that, we have to travel through the town of Puerto Natales. Yeah, this is Mylodon Central. This town. This town. People the, love stories about giants, and that may be one of the reasons why the legends have persisted through yeah. the centuries. Let's go ahead and check them out. Let's go and have a look. Let's take this out. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> but another reason for this fascination is that from time to time, stories of Mylodon sightings crop up throughout South America. The Bigfoot stories just never seem to stop. Find me. <laughs> Find me. This